This has got to be the most expensive thing I've put on my table. Hello all and welcome to the corner where today we have this huge thing. Apparently it's a very collectible console, or so I'm told. All joking aside, this is the Pioneer CLD A100, the premium laserdisc playing, CD capable, Sega Genesis? Yes, this piece is a laserdisc playing console which has a whole Mega uh, Genesis and Sega Sega CD built into this pack. That's PAC, pack. These packs are interchangeable modules which let you completely change what the laser active can do, ranging from being a simple laser disc player with computer control available via an optional pack, a karaoke machine, PC Engine or Turbo Graphics console supporting CD-ROM-ROM -ROM and LD-ROM-ROM -ROM formats. You actually pronounce this CD-ROM-ROM. -ROM. Uh, we've got the CD-ROM-ROM. -ROM. But the most common configuration was with a Sega Genesis slash Sega Sega CD combo called the Mega Drive and Mega CD in Japan and Europe, though the Laser Active wasn't actually sold in Europe. In fact, it barely sold that well in America either due to its high price, especially when the packs were being sold separate. This machine cost around $970 when it was launched in America in 1993. The Mega LD pack you see here cost an extra $600 on top of that, so this system would have been $1,570 back in 1993. Imagine buying a 4K Blu-ray capable console and adjusted for inflation, paying almost $2,800 for the privilege. Yikes. The packs can be ejected with this very easy to press button, followed by the struggle of a lifetime, at which point you now have a great big hole in your front. This Mega LD pack isn't far off the size of the Sega Mega CD X, called the Sega Sega CD X in America, a similar but not Laserdisc playing portable model which functions as a portable CD player for all your portable music needs. You have two DE9 controller ports at the front which will take standard Sega Mega Drive control pads and devices, Sega Master System pads and if you really want a challenge, Atari one button joysticks. One thing that this pack is not compatible with is this 4 player adapter from Electronic Arts. Although electrically compatible, physically it just doesn't fit as the controller ports are stacked one on top of the other. And here we have the flatbed cartridge slot where you can put your games in like this. And like this. Yes, there really is nothing stopping you from putting the game in backwards. Thankfully it didn't kill my favourite game but it still feels silly that there isn't even a notch to stop you doing this or even a graphic to guide you. This wide slot is also great for playing imports as it seems any car, including this Japanese Moonwalker cartridge, will fit in very nicely. Oh yes, need to remember, label side down. On the front panel of the laser active you have this shiny reset button which also acts as the remote control receiver, the headphone jack and the volume knob, a digital memory button which I have no idea what it does, here is the big clunking power switch, the pack eject button, play, pause, and here's the object button for the regular CD tray. And then the object button for the slightly larger laser disc tray. Hey, there we go. Ah, yes. This unit is also on loan to me for repairs, and this is one of the occasional issues it has. Another fault it has is the not so latching latching power switch. I had also noticed that the tray doesn't sit flush with the front panel, which could mean that the framework inside is bent. I was told by the owner that the unit had suffered shipping damage, which is evident by the cracked plastic on the faceplate, hence my belief that the frame might also be bent too. But anyway, just look at the size of the tray. It's an event unto itself when it's opening. The disc as well seemed like a comical perspective gag. <laughs> that's not a disc. That's a disc. This also leads to the beautiful cover art, both glorious and huge. I won't go into the Laserdisc movie format in this video, but if you are curious, check out the excellent videos made by Matt at Techmoan for more on this collector's format. They are really worth a watch. On the back we have the hardwired 110 American 2 prong plug doohickey which requires an entirely safe wall war of a certain depth. 
to step down my silly British 230 volts to something that the laser active will not blow up with. To the right we have the control in and out ports for controlling things with a controller. We have the composite video out, composite video out again because one port wasn't enough. Then mono audio output which is used for the RF module. To that we have the twin stereo output and optical output for digital stereo and DTS which was included on some laser discs in NTSC regions. The optical port doesn't handle Dolby Digital as the only way to get that is to mod the player to have an RF AC3 output and then use a separate decoder box to get 5.1 Dolby Digital surround. We'll need to see if the laser mechanism will still read discs so I've brought out the mini screen again. As you saw, the laser active is a composite only machine, so to connect it to the SCAR only TV I'll be using one of the millions of RCA to SCAR converters that exist this one happening to come from my OG Xbox. Just plug in the red, white and yellow and into the rear it goes. Ah yes, I forgot. This PAL TV isn't compatible with NTSC colour. With modern HDMI systems you become so complacent to plug and play that sometimes we just forget about this incompatibility, so it will be in black and white from here on out. Compared to the Mega CD BIOS screens, this menu is very bland looking, but anyway. Let's try a Laserdisc movie first. Nope, doesn't recognise it. This bodes well. Maybe Sonic CD instead. This unit will play Sega Sega CD games after all, even despite it having the whole LD tray open. Nope, once again a no-go. You know the drill. Nightwish maybe? Nope. The power of the fins does not compel this player. So we have no laser active actively going on here. Let's try that Moonwalker cartridge whilst we're at it. I've never fully liked the Mega Drive version of Moonwalker, I prefer the arcade System 16 version personally. But still, it's working even if missing all its colour. But then again, it doesn't matter if it's black and white. With a mechanism that's stuck and a laser that's not working, we'll need to tear into this beast. There's two screws on the side that need to be undone. followed by three screws on the back along the lid. Finally, the two screws on the other side. Now we can slide the lid back and lift it off to reveal. Oh good lord. Oh good lord. Right, well, the laser is down in there and the mechanism is also bent and there's a lot of stuff in here. Hmm, this is going to be fun. I also found this unnerving warning label in the lid. Uh oh. 
Yeah, there's lasers down there, and we need to somehow get to it. I'm guessing it probably might be easier to go from the bottom. Well, actually, we can clean it from the top. And if we really need to, we can take this bar off of these two screws, and that'll just lift up quite nicely. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, so that comes off. Looks relatively straight. And now we can get access to the laser module, which we'll try to clean first because I do have a laser module, but I'd rather not use it if absolutely necessary. And as per usual, just using a bit of IPA, which you can't see. There you go. A bit of IPA, cotton bud. Just clean up that lens. One thing that might be a problem is it might be dirty on the inside of the lens, but that looks a lot better to me. Let's just put this back on. In fact, because the tray is so long, and if I open it like this, it's just going to go straight into the thing. I'm going to put the disc in now, and then just see if it starts reading it. God, these things are huge. Hmm, I've got to be very careful to try not to scratch the disc. Death Doctor of Doom and see how we go on. Also, whenever you've got it plugged into live mains, never touch anything unless you really know what you're doing. Well, that was disappointing then. <sighs> you know. It might just be that I need to do click play. Let's try that again. Well, it seems to have recognised that there's a laser, laser disc in there. Ooh. I hope that thing doesn't fly out. Oh, would you look at that? Hello, Coda. You're under arrest for drug. What the? With the laser active now reading laser disc, let's try some CDs again. So, Sonic CD. Well, as you may have guessed, this is a Mega CD disc and not a Sega Sega CD disc, so region locking strikes back again. What about our Finnish friends instead? Well, colour me surprised despite the fact everything's been black and white so far. I didn't think that the laser would require such a simple fix, but then again miracles can happen. There is still the issue of the tray loading mechanism, the non-latching power button and possibly a bent framework, hence the stuck out tray. I have also been told that these units are around the time of the capacitor plague, so we may have our work cut out for us here. But that will do for part 1, join me in part 2 where we delve deeper into the laser active and see if we can repair it all up. Perhaps subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss it. <laughs>